Hi, welcome back for one more Kickstarter preview. Today I'm very happy because I have a chance to show you how Small Samurai Empires works. This is a brand new game from Arcona Games. They have already produced Small Star Empires, another great area control game. This is not a retheme of this original game, this is a completely different game which packs two great mechanisms. The first one is area control of course and the second one is action programming. I really enjoy both and I think they have managed to blend them excellently in this new game. This game has obviously a Japanese theme, it has to do with the feudal Japan, you have to try to take control and keep control of as many regions as possible but you do it in a very clever way using action programming. Very simple rules, you can teach it to anyone within five minutes or even less so join me at the table, I'll show you how Small Samurai Empires works and I'll tell you my opinion at the end of this video. So let me explain how you set up the game. This is very simple. Each player gets all the pieces from his color, which essentially are a player screen, 16 cubes of their color. This will be upgraded in the Kickstarter campaign in Small Samurais and that's brilliant already. And also each player gets his or her order tokens and they keep everything behind their screen. I have two of the screens on flat on the table and two of the screens sitting vertically so you can check how they look also from the artwork point of view which is already great. Next you deal one objective card to each player. These cards look like that and this is a prototype obviously but you can see on the Kickstarter page that this is already enhanced and there is a new art and uh, format of uh, these objective cards. In any case, you deal one of those randomly to each of the players. Also, the next thing that you need to remember during setup is you take six Bushido and six food tokens and you sit them randomly on each of the spaces of the map that have the harvest symbol, which is the scythe. You can see one like that here or here or here. Whichever region has one of the symbols, you put randomly one of the Bushido or food tokens to set up the game. And then you have it, you're ready to play. The last thing you need to do before you start is you, each player places two armies in each region capital, meaning each region which has this white capital symbol here. So this is one region and it's going to hold two armies from each of the players. So here we have a four player game. So green will put two armies, blue two armies, etc. Small Samurai Empires is an action programming area control game for 2-4 to four players and players are fighting for control of feudal Japan using their armies of samurais. A game of Small Samurai Empires is divided into three eras and each era is divided into two rounds. Each round will have the following two phases, the planning phase followed by the resolution phase. Keep a note that in an era the two rounds are played a bit different from one another. Okay, so before we run into explaining the rounds and the phases within a round, let me show you quickly again a zoom in of the player's action tokens. So these are the action tokens of the players and they are, each player has their own, exactly the same with a different color border. This is a green player and they have green color border around the round action markers. And these are grouped by category. So you have the ones where you move the first two columns, you have the ones where you put new troops on the map, you have the harvest icons, the fight icons and the castle icon. All this will be explained later on. So we start with the first round of an era, where we have first of all the planning phase. In clockwise order, players place one order token of their choice from behind their screen face down on one of the empty slots. Keep in mind that there are four main provinces of Japan. We can see here three out of the four because we have zoomed in. We have this gray area, the orange one and the teal one. So each player can take secretly behind his screen one of his action command tokens and choose one of the slots there or there and place it face down in one of those slots. This is done in clockwise order, every player is placing one of those tokens. Very simple rules, in the first round of an era, in the planning phase, you cannot go and put one of your tokens on top of another player, you need to go 
on an empty spot. And also there is a different amount of tokens you place depending on the number of players participating. So with two and three players, each player will place four order tokens. And with four players, each player will place three order tokens. Another fast important rule is that the area, the region where you place your action command token will influence this region. So if I place it here, it will influence the gray one. If I place it here, it will influence the orange one and so on and so forth. You get the idea. As you can see on the board, the place where you put your order tokens, these circles here, these slots, have pre-printed bonus triggered icons next to them. So for example, when a player is putting his face down order token, no matter what he chose in one of the slots, he can trigger the bonus action and has nothing to do with what he selected here. So this bonus action, all these bonus actions, they have the pre-triggered icons that they have some uh, the same iconography more or less with uh, your main actions but they have nothing to do with what you selected or they may have to be the same and you combine them but in this case the yellow player put his order token here and he can trigger the move one army and extra bonus which means he can take in this region from one area one of his armies and move it into an adjacent one here i cross the sea because there is a dotted line in a ship or I can go from this area to the one here, again with a dotted line. Or I can go from this area here, because there is a foot token on the map. When all players have placed the required number of order tokens, here we play a four player game, so we need to place three order tokens each. Then the player moves to the next phase. And the next phase is the resolution phase. Now starting from the bottom action on the board and going upwards, through all the slots, players will reveal and resolve their order tokens. They do not return the order tokens to your supply, you just leave it where you had it placed in the first place. So you start from here, the yellow player is going to flip and resolve his order token, perform his respective action, then the next player is going to do so, then the next icon, so we go by icon order, then you move from there to the top, you do the same, the same, the same, the same, etc. Each time taking a pause so that the respective owner of the order token resolves the action, of course. Okay, so now let's see how the actions work, how the order tokens work once they're flipped and they're resolved by the players. So, depending on the order token a player has revealed, he or she will play out the following actions. We start by the move armies which comes into moving two armies or moving three armies here the green player has flipped this order token so he can move two armies meaning he can take one army to go here say and one army to go maybe in the same spot to make more secure his area then the next player is flipping the yellow player the next icon actually no matter what the player is the next icon in order is flipped so in this case it was a yellow player, so they get to move three armies. Now you can either move the same army up to three times, so maybe you could do one, two, and then come across three, with one, a uh, three order movement, or you can move one, two, three. So you can either split it or use it in the same army or samurai to move. So let's see the next icon. The next icon is this one, which is the recruit two armies icon. So you have to pay one food, meaning you have to pay one of those tokens from your back of your screen. And then you can place two armies in either the region capital or a castle you control in that region. So in this case, the red player would be able to place two additional armies in the capital of that region since he has um, control he's in the capital or if he had a castle in this region he would be able to place it in the region but in any case he has to spend one food token the next cycle here is the green player playing the harvest order which happens is that they gain one resource food or bushido 
for each territory in the region they control or they contest. You control the territory if you have more armies than the opponents, than any other player essentially, or you contest the territory if you are tied with another player for the most armies in that uh, territory. If you contest a territory that produces a resource with another player and you have played a harvest action in that region, both you will gain that resource. So for example, here the green player can gain one food token for this region because they control it. You can see the harvest icon here and it produces food. Okay, so they get one food icon. Also, there is another harvest icon here. They contest it with the blue player. They both have the same number of armies, which is one. So they're both going to take one Bushido token, one for the green and one for the blue player here. And generally, this is how the harvest icon works. You have to check out the different tokens for each harvest icon region and you have to program so that you get the respective resources accordingly. So let's move to the next order. The next order is the attack. You kill an opponent army in a territory in that region where you both have at least one army. Then you may pay one Bushido to kill another army of an opponent in the same territory. So for example here the yellow player has initiated an attack meaning they can decide in either here or here or here because they share armies with other players to kill another uh, army. So let's say he wants to take control of this shrine here. So he kills one army of the blue player because he played one attack order. If the blue player had for example two armies here and the yellow player has initiated an attack they kill the first one and they can spend Bushido tokens to kill another one so this is a nice way for this player to get rid of both the um, the blue the two blue armies of uh, the blue player by paying one additional Bushido keep in mind this has to be in the same territory as in the example we have shown let's see what the blue player has done they want to make an attack they were too late because they placed their order token next so you see timing is important as well so now they cannot kill this yellow uh, army samurai that they have planned originally so but they, what they can do is they can kill this one so they get rid of the yellow player there and they control this region on their own they were controlling it before because it had two versus one but now they got rid of the yellow cube the yellow samurai so the last order token a player can play or program to play actually is a castle. Let's see what the yellow player has done here. They have programmed a castle. So what happens is the player who programmed the castle can return three armies you control from one single territory without a castle and put one castle in that territory. Finally, you put one cube on top of the castle. In this case, it will be one samurai since to called cool upgrade already in the Kickstarter campaign. So you put one samurai on top of the castle to mark it's yours. Now you have permanent influence of three in that territory. The same as if you had already three samurais there. And you can spend the samurais in investing and attacking or exploring, uh, exploiting other regions as well. So you save samurais uh, to use them somewhere else. Additionally, you also immediately score two victory points for the castle. There is additional scoring for the castle. At the end of each era, each player will score one point for each castle they control. So, what the yellow player would do here is they would remove three samurais from one region they control, which does not have a castle, and they would place one of the castles. This is a prototype, so keep in mind that this is prototype component, and they would place one of their samurais on top of the castle to indicate it's theirs. So now they have three plus one, four influence in this region. Plus they're gonna score the two victory points immediately and one victory point if they control this castle by the end of each era. Okay, do you remember the triggered actions? The symbols that were next to the slots where we were placing the order tokens? Let's talk about those a bit now. As we mentioned before, when you place an order token during the planning phase, you immediately get to play a single triggered action depending on the slot where you place your token. 
These actions are the following. The symbology is very simple. The plus, the first one on the left shows a plus and a cube. That means you recruit one army. The second one shows a move one army. So you move one army like we did before. The third one shows the attack one army so you can attack one more army. And then you have the harvest symbol in the last. So these are bonus triggered actions and they happen immediately when you place the um, order token face down before moving to the resolution phase. Okay, so let's move to the second round of an era. We play three eras and each era has two rounds. So we move to the second round of the first era. Remember, it plays slightly different, just slightly. So this round also has a planning and resolution phase, but there are small differences. During the planning phase, each player can put one less order token from the supply. So you don't put the same number, you put one less. Additionally, when players put their order tokens, they may either put it on one of their own tokens and do it for free. So if the green player was playing first, they would if they would place it on top of their first green token, they would do it for free. But if they chose to put it on an order token of another player from the previous round, for example, if they decide to place it here, covering the blue order token, then they would have to spend one Bushido. So they would pay one Bushido if it is your first time covering an opponent token during this round, two Bushido if it is your second time, or three Bushido if it is your third covered token. Note also that you cannot put a token on another player that has already a token from this round, meaning the blue player, of course, cannot come back and recover or cover again, essentially, uh, a token placed in this round. Then the, the resolution phase takes place. During the resolution phase, players will reveal and resolve the order tokens from top going to down, meaning here we're going to resolve, flip and resolve first this one, and then we're going to resolve the one at the bottom. This provides a lot of strategy because obviously you have to combine the if you are playing on top of your own tokens to play them for free. You have to combine them in a, comp in a cool order so that they do first the top and then the second one. Or you have to remember what the next player is doing so you can plan ahead and do something better before them. The actions on the tokens that were placed in the first round of the era and were not covered will also be played out again. So how an era ends? After all players have resolved all their tokens in the second round of this era that is being played, the era ends and players proceed to the following steps. First of all, we have a full harvest. Each player that controls a territory that produces a resource gains that resource and places it behind their screen. So again, it is very important to keep control of the resource producing regions because you're going to grasp and to, to gain one more resource of that type and it's very important because you can see that both food and Bushido tokens are crucial in this game. Then we proceed with scoring. We'll uh, come back to the scoring. We score victory points for the regions and then after this is done we, we clean up all the other tokens so all these are removed from the game and we proceed to the next era, the second or the third to finish the game. The game ends immediately at the end of the third era and the player with the most victory points will win the game. So what I have left out to tell you is the scoring that happens between harvest and cleaning up at the end of each era. Now the prototype rules indicate that there are three variants for scoring and I really liked all three of them and I have seen from the Kickstarter campaign that it's a mix of those three as well so there is, might be an additional one as well. In any case they all look very great but there is a lot of play testing done so that uh, the developers and the designer would decide which one is going to be the dominant way of scoring and the rest would be obviously variants. In any case I'm briefly going to describe all of them so you get an idea of how they score. So you can have a simple scoring variant with no objective cards. These were the objective cards that we got at the beginning of the game. So if you don't use them, then you're going to score simply victory points. Each player gains one point for each territory, shrine and castle they control. And Thai players for territories don't gain any points at all. Then each player gains points equal to the region value that they, uh, if they control that region. 
You control the region obviously by having the most territories in that region and then the tired players again don't gain any points. You can see that there are some pre-printed values for the, um, the region value if you have the most the province value you have the most uh, control regions in this gray area for example or in the purple one or the orange one etc so this is one way of scoring the other variant for scoring at the end of each era has to do with the objective cards obviously the cards that i showed you before and that each uh, player got one at the beginning of the game so let me put some space every player will reveal their scoring card and by doing so they will provide information on the scoring of each era so player reveals reveal their objective cards that they have received at the beginning of the game and each icon among the revealed cards adds plus one value to that territory shrine or capital city for example if this is what we revealed we know that the purple region is going to get plus two, one from here and one from here. And the same goes for the blue one. Or here the capital is going to gain plus one, or the shrine. So depending on the combination, and there are a lot of cards to give a nice mix and lots of replayability, you're gonna have at the end of each era, different things giving victory points. And this gives a lot of dynamic way of keeping an eye of what your opponents are doing, because each era is going to have lots of things to chase a lot of things to leave behind. So in this type of scoring with um, the objective cards, after determining the value each player gains for each territory, shrine, capital, city, they control, then each player gain points equal to the region value if they have control of that region. Again, we explained how you control the region before, the same uh, is in effect. So players then discard the current objectives and they receive new objective cards for the next era. With the start, the next era starts with a player with the lowest amount of points so that you can have a catch-up mechanism. The third variant for scoring is region values where you use the objective cards. Players reveal their objective cards and gain one territory token for each territory they control and put behind their screens. The symbols on the objective cards that have been revealed will increase the values of those territories permanently. So you use something like a stock board which is not included here, you can check it out on the a Kickstarter campaign and for each one of those uh, gained points you move up in the respective region say for example the purple or the orange etc. The player will score 1, 3, 5 or 8 for controlling 1, 2, 3 or 4 shrines and score regions normally. Players receive new objective cards and the next era starts with a player with the highest amount of points going clockwise. Since there was no territory scoring at the end of an era, at the end of the game players reveal their amount of territory tokens and gain points for each one equal to the value. This is the third way of scoring and from the schematics and picks I have seen on the animations on the Kickstarter campaign, there is another one in place which I think I like the most, but I'll leave that for you to explore by going to the Kickstarter campaign. Again, just to brief summarize, at the end of each era we have the full harvest, the scoring, no matter what variant scoring you choose, and then we have the cleanup tokens phase. After that, a new era begins, so overall we're going to play three eras. So that's how you play Small Samurai Empires. Hope you get a real good understanding of how the game works. It has very simple rules, not many things to remember. Basically, there are just a few basic actions and icons that you need to, to keep an eye on, and they're easily understood and caught up from say the first even turn from the game. It's a very simple game, has very very simple rules. I can't say that I can teach an area control slash action programming game in five minutes to anyone, but I can say this with Small Samurai Empires and this is a plus, a huge plus in my opinion. Despite the very few rules and it's only a couple of pages but even, even less, I mean it's crystal clear how this game works uh, very from the very beginning also actually. So despite the few rules it's very, very tactical and strategic in a lot of levels. So you don't have to have too many rules always to get a great and engaging game. And this is what Small Samurai Empires has managed to, to achieve is with a few rules to provide a gameplay that it's very unique, very fresh, very interesting and keeps you really focused and trying to outguess your opponents, 
grab the control of specific regions and also try to understand which actions are going to play at what time what time so essentially this is for me a real gem has so many things that you need to to keep a knife in without too many rules and i really enjoyed it i'm saying again the rules thing but it's it's tremendous how much fun you can have with only a few rules and this is an achievement in my opinion uh, despite the rules it's very enjoyable it looks great has very nice aesthetics if you're a fan of feudal japan and you know japanese themed games this is something that you definitely need to check you can easily teach it to anyone and this is a uh, also another plus you can easily enjoy it with a lot of different gamers and game uh, style players so depending on what everyone likes this is a very comfortable sitting game in a lot of tastes for, from a lot of people and that's that's a plus as well the production of, of uh, arcona games is great i have here for example small star empires in the second edition already the first one was brilliant the second one is brilliant as well they really do take care of the production value and the production details and i'm sure they're going to do tremendous work with small samurai empires as well so i'm very excited about the game i really enjoyed it. it's really striking how sometimes small companies with a few rules and you know just some bright ideas they can really impress you and grasp you with what they can produce and okay obviously you need to have talent and i think the guys from uh, Arcona Games really nailed it, with this, uh, nailed it with this one. So I really enjoyed Small Samurai Empires. If you are a fan of area control and action programming and you, you want to enjoy these two mechanisms in say uh, half an hour or even uh, an hour in the, in the longest four player format, I definitely recommend to go and check it out. This is currently on Kickstarter. Uh, Kickstarter, I'm putting the, the link in the description below so you can follow the link to, to the campaign and, f and support them with uh, your funding if you like the game. Check it out, there's a lot of things that are going to be unlocked during uh, the campaign as well. So really looking forward for this to get published and hit my table. I'm highly recommending it. This is a very, very simple and robust but straightforward design that is promising to deliver a lot of fun and a lot of strategy and tactics in so many levels. So if you enjoy both area control and action programming games, this is something that you should not miss and should not let it fly under your radar. So this is Small Samurai Empires. I really enjoyed the game. So please go and check it out on Kickstarter and, if, and find out if this is something that you'd like to, to back and support with your funding. So till next time, many thanks for watching and keep playing.